helpful. So I'd like to ask each of you a little bit about uh, your thoughts on, on the adequacy of our nutrition assistance programs. Um, so obviously we have SNAP, WIC, we have Pandemic EBT, we have the Farmers to Families Food Box program, um, each obviously having a slightly different um, audience. Uh, but I would like to kind of speak to you both about whether they have met the needs in this incredibly trying time and what needs to happen for each of those programs moving forward. And, and Secretary Vilsack, why don't you start? Well, I, I, you know, I think if people understood how the SNAP benefit is calculated, they would have to be scratching their head. Uh, it's based on uh, an antiquated uh, calculation, which I think results in a, in a fairly significant low benefit, if you will, to families that are you know, struggling uh, financially. Uh, and so one thing I think we need to take a look at in the long term is how we calculate the SNAP benefit. Uh, in terms of WIC, one of the concerns that I have is that uh, too few people take a full advantage of a very good program. Uh, and Mike may, may realize this as well. Uh, the reality is this is a good program. It, it obviously helps women, infants, and children, uh, but only 50 to 60 percent of the people who are eligible take full advantage of that program. And so I think we need to do a better job of making sure folks understand the benefit of that program and the availability and don't see it as welfare, but see it as, as a way of, of providing uh, adequate nutrition uh, to their families. Uh, in terms of the the, the box program, uh, look, uh, you know, you got to try things in, in a difficult time. But one of the things I think we need to learn in the future is making sure that as we do uh, whatever the government does, whatever, however it intervenes, uh, that we do it in a way that doesn't completely disrupt uh, market forces. Uh, and I know that's a delicate balance. Uh, if you buy too much of this or buy too much of that, you can really create a spike uh, in the price and make it sometimes more difficult to, to be able to export or sell that product as well overseas. So you basically disrupt uh, one of your key markets. So it's a, it's a real challenge. Uh, and obviously there's gonna be a lot of study done uh, after we get control of this pandemic uh, in terms of what we did well and what we need to do a little bit better the next time. Wonderful. And before I move on to, to uh, Secretary Johans, I'd like to just follow up with, um, in terms of the food box program, can you, would you like to say anything about kind of how it it meets um, food sovereignty needs, you know, in terms of people's specific dietary requirements or religious affiliation or, you know, those kinds of things? Is a program like this ever going to um, be a one size fits all approach, uh, you know? Well, when this program was first, first proposed uh, in the context of the SNAP program, I think one of the basic concerns was that how do you create a box that is personalized to a point of being able to respond to uh, a dietetics needs or someone who has uh, other uh, health conditions that require certain types of foods either uh, to be prevented or, or to be increased. And that's the, that's the challenge with the box program is being able to tailor it in a way that responds to the individual needs. I think that's why the SNAP program is, is popular because it does provide you the capacity to go in and make your own choices and to make sure that you're buying the right kind of food for, for your family. Um, and again, that gets back to making sure that the, we calculate a benefit that is based on real world experience. Just to give you an example, uh, this, this formula su uh, suggests and, and, and assumes that uh, the average American family is spending about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes a day preparing dinner. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's the American family of today. And it's certainly not the American family of today that assumes uh, that you would consume nearly 20 pounds of beans each week. Uh, you know, I'm not sure when that was, but it's certainly not today. Uh, so, so clearly we need to take a look at that formula uh, to make sure that we're adequately providing the kind of nutrition assistance that is necessary during tough times. So Secretary Johans, we have just a couple minutes left, but I'd like to get your thoughts as well on, on nutrition assistance programs and, and their ability to meet the needs in the pandemic. You know, uh, Tom and I worked on the same programs um, when we were Secretary of Agriculture. And I do think the SNAP program is going to continue to be the, the leader in terms of meeting those needs. Uh, could not agree more about the WIC program. It always amazed me that uh, we did not get greater participation because it's such a good program and it's an important program. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention, though, uh, and give a shout out to the food banks around the country. Uh, they have done uh, during this pandemic remarkable work. And uh, 
I did, I could not sing their praises more. I felt that way uh, when I was Secretary of Agriculture. I feel that way today. Talk about the perfect storm. Uh, here they are, this tremendous demand is headed their way. Because of COVID, they're having a hard time getting the volunteers to do the work, and yet the demand is just exponential. And that was nationwide. It didn't matter if you were in North Dakota or Washington, D.C. or wherever, uh, that demand just grew because uh, people were out of work and a whole host of things were going on. So uh, I want to mention them and and say uh, whatever we can do to help support them, I think is very, very important, whether it's private or public help.